we actually hung these actors uh, on this little contraption that would spin them around. I got in the car with the operators, and uh, it was quite fun. Um, I did this stunt where we strapped cameras right there, bam. That looked like it hurt. Now, look at the driver in the car, John Turturro. As here, he uses his magnetic gun right there. If you freeze it, watch the gun. Watch the guns fly up past the guys. When you, when, I want you to go back in that DVD and freeze it, because I told the driver, I said, "No, you will not get hurt. They're rubber guns, and they're on bungee cords, and they're going to pull." Well, if you freeze it, you'll see it hit him kind of in the temple. <laughs> he goes, "I thought you said it wasn't going to hurt." Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> there are. I told the writers, I said, "You know, I really want to have Bumblebee piss on John Turturro." Um, you know, crazy, but you know what? At least the audience is left. You weren't supposed to hear. I gotta tell you, a bunch of, a bunch of adults running around the set the first couple of days saying the word Bumblebee and Megatron, and I remember the first couple of days, literally about 50, 50 airmen, um, military extras at the, the Holloman Air Force Base, and I said, I know, guys, this sounds really stupid, but. You're gonna have this big robot fly in, go and transform land right here. And the guys were in their 20s, 30s. They go, uh, would that be Starscream? <laughs> I'm like, you know, it was. I honestly did not think there were that many fans around the world for this thing, and how much it meant to people that are now in their 30s. And you know, it, it just, it just, I, I, you know, being told. But, but seeing it in your life is a different thing. But, but just for Hasbro to say, uh, you know, this is the largest selling toy around the world. The top, it's a top five largest selling toy around the world for 20 years. Um, I think that's a big accomplishment. But I just didn't realize the depth of, of how many fans there were around the world. And, um, you know, right now, uh, you, you just kind of, as we were getting ready to release the movie, and, the, and the, 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 the trailers were always like on Yahoo, like the number one downloaded, uh, most watched, and consistently from when they came out Christmas to almost the day of the release. Like pirates would come up there, and then it would fall back down, but we were always one and two for the entire time, and that kind of told me something. It actually became one of the most downloaded trailers uh, in, in, in history, according to Yahoo, that tracks this stuff. Um, all those kind of signs were telling me something. And then when it opened, it became the largest non-sequel opening of all time. Which, uh, you know, I, I guess I was a. Uh, I, I just honestly did not think it could do as well as it's done so far. I mean, it's going to pass 300 plus million here, and uh, uh, you know, it's right up there with the Spider-Man and uh, Pirates Three, these gigantic franchises. Uh, you know, internationally, it's going to, right now, we're already at 260-something, and it'll probably go to 350, 400, I don't know. But um, I guess it was a good gamble for the studio on this. Copter shot right there, um, digitally, but uh, not me for some reason. Uh, that was a real helicopter, very close to that bus. I just like things real. As much real as I can get, I'm going to do, and... Uh, um, it seems to be like a dying art with a lot of directors now where you do your own stunts, do a lot of stunts and stuff like that. Doing these gigantic moves on this special Aquila crane, which is like 75 feet tall, we're able to do these big drops. Not scene because we had four helicopters, one airship, and, uh, um, and this, uh, of, I don't know if that's, remember that balloon river right there. Saved a guy's life uh, in the river that night. We were just so happened to be there when a guy in a hospital uniform was floating by, and, and literally, there's no getting out of that thing because that channel travels very quickly, and it's all algae, and there's no stopping. It goes all the way to the ocean. It was so some one of our electricians just threw out a piece of cable and saved this guy. It was like an escapee from some hospital. Uh, obviously, I've had to do so much digital animation, of character animation. Uh, uh, it was really one of the most fascinating things about this movie is, is, is actually directing these kind of creatures and, and, and ultimately making them feel like you've got a soul inside of them uh, when you see these things. And I think it's done through sound and facial stuff. You know, you just start to feel for this thing that doesn't even exist. I think that's kind of the accomplishment of the movie.
Ah. Right there, that, that's the mock-up of Bumblebee. We actually built for 200 grand. Really complicated build. It wasn't, you couldn't really shoot it that closely. Uh, like you can see right there, that's the mock-up, which saves money on digital shots. And then there again, you see the mock-up. And then we digital shot. Right there, the five, six, seven shots with that mock-up just saved a lot of money. But pieces of like Optimus Prime and uh, certain head sections, but uh, nothing that detailed. We built Megatron's legs in the in the in the chamber where he's being held. We built about 30 feet of his legs, which cost us a half a million dollars. But when we use it through those shots, it actually saves you on effect shots. Because um, every one of those pieces, the reason why it's so expensive, you got to carve it out of foam, and then you know it's got to be on a steel like, kind of frame to hold it up. And, here, I, I call it the Jungle Gym Optimus. I just hated the blocking of it, but we were just kind of stuck with the shot that we, we shot. Often the maters had to squeeze in where we could fit our robots. Um, we got to be very good at shooting robots after a while, and we used a special tool. Um, uh, it's a Porsche Cayenne with a special crane on it where we're able to um, a move at a high rate of speed on a car and we can do these amazing crane moves so it was actually like our robot cam um, where we could spin around right there walking through National Military Command that was a room that I've been to it's the basement of the Pentagon that's where they run wars and whatnot and uh, the thing that I always remember was they going down there they have these two lucite doors that are like bulletproof and you can you know blast proof and uh, you have to go through these doors and, um that we take this this uh, um, this conversation that comes up is called the, the vault in the uh, in the Pentagon. Actually, it's a soundproof room that has this vault door, and it has five seats um, for the Secretary of Defense. All right. Next part coming soon.